Good morning, everyone. I'm Malcolm Ford. Firstly, I want to humbly thank God for the privilege of being part of these celebrations today. Um, that black book that you saw, that Glenn has had, I had the opportunity to look through two or three of those and wrote a six-page uh, outline, historical outline of this church. Now, I'm just going to try and condense that material uh, for you this morning. And beginning right back in the late 1800s, early 19, 1900s, the original members of the Wangarei Seventh-day Adventist Church would have met in homes. The first records of the church began in November 3, 1923. Previous to that time and following, the church members met in the Masonic Hall. Membership was listed as 22. Among those members were John and Eva Wordsworth and George and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Wordsworth. In October 5, 1924, a property in Norfolk Street was purchased for a church building. Uh, there we have the, uh, sorry, that previous was the um, Wordsworth family. And this is the Norfolk Street Church today. It is now, um, it's been converted into an office complex. <clears throat> In 1928, the Alliance Temperance Organization requested permission to use this church for monthly meetings. But the conference advised the Wangarei Church against it, saying, quote, the Alliance might not grace our church as there was a grave possibility of irreverence. <laughs> so that was stifled. The Sabbath School program must have taken at least an hour because a decision was made to reduce the time to 50 minutes. In May 1935, two visiting pastors gave a lantern lecture about missionary work in the New Hebrides, now Vanuatu. Now a lantern lecture that's prehistoric technology, if ever there was one. <laughs> In 1943, the minister was a pastor, O.W. Knight. He was followed by John Mitchell, a hard-working minister who travelled mainly on motorbike all through Northland. And it was John Mitchell who married Marnie and me. 1946, a typewritten report from the treasurer was a feature of the meeting on the 17th of July. Modern technology creeping in again, a typewritten report. Previous to that, it had all been handwritten. 1947, with the growth of church membership and an increasing responsibility for certain offices, the importance of nominating committees and church boards was noted. 1948, mention was made in one of the business meetings about the effects of the community of an infantile paralysis epidemic. The Berlin airlift effort was calling for donations and one business meeting records, quoting, that half of the church funds and the total poor funds, poor funds, go towards a parcel for Germany. So they did have concerns for the needs of the community, even as far away as Germany. A building committee was formed to consider plans for enlarging the Norfolk Street Church. Also a project for a church school was to be investigated. 1950, plans for the extension of the church, sorry, uh, 1950, the, ex the church extension plans were passed and arrangements for building were to be confirmed. So they ex added on to the, to the rear of that church to increase the size. 1953, Pastor Whitaker arrived. The first offering each month was to go to the building fund. A vacant lot on the corner of Mill Road and Shortland Street, that's right here, was viewed as a possible site for a school or a church. So they weren't too sure which way it was going to go at the beginning. Meetings at Norfolk Street Church were technically illegal because the sanitary and fire equipment of the church were not adequate for the regulations when over 120 members, including families, might be in attendance. A building finance committee was formed. It was decided to purchase the Mill Road property. Before building plans were drawn up, and work commenced, it was decided 
to grow a crop of potatoes with proceeds to go to the building fund. It was a brother Crawford, a Glenys' grandfather, who right on the spot grew this crop of potatoes, which we all helped to dig up and sell. Uh, 1954, a visiting pastor showed three movie films on Mel Wordsworth's 8mm projector. The movies were, listen, Babes in the Wood, See How They Run, and Royal Destiny, all rated R18. <laughs> the sale of the Norfolk Street Church to the Oddfellows Lodge was confirmed. Pews had to be removed and the building could only be used between 9.30 and 3.30, Saturdays only. Tea tree on Ringrose's farm was being cut for firewood for sale. Plans for a school were presented. 1955. The conference had adopted a policy to encourage all members of the conference to donate one pound each to go towards any church building in the conference. Ongaray would qualify for the proceeds of such an offering. On, in October, the new youth hall, the first part of the new complex, was completed to a stage where it could be used. The odd fellows made a complaint that, quote, ashtrays have somehow gone missing. <laughs> Surely they didn't think that we used them to take up the offering with. <laughs> 1955 still, um, a study of the original church complex design would have one wondering if it were not a commercial office structure or even a factory. We've got a picture, the next picture of, the, of this pre present church. Uh, we'll show it. Okay. Now, the original plans had no tower. So you can imagine with no tower, it could just look like an office <coughs> complex or a factory even. Some serious questions as to whether the style of architecture was appropriate for a church were raised. Pastor Whitaker indicated that a design for including a tower was to be considered. I think it was Mel Wordsworth who came back from a trip in America and he had a photograph of a, a church in Hawaii and I think we used some of those ideas in the tower. 1956, the new minister, Pastor Magnuson, arrived. The rostrum and the organ were to be, re to be removed from the Oddfellows Hall. Vi Codling took charge of the basket-making group from Mrs Whitaker. The basket-making project had injected a considerable amount into the building fund. In November, a mission team arrived and began planning a mission for the new year. 1957, in February, three ministers arrived, pastors Potts, Wood and Davies. The church hall was completed and that part of the complex officially opened for use as a church. It is this event that we are celebrating this weekend. The church proper, this building we are in today, was officially opened in 1957. Thank you.